Okay, let's go ahead and proceed with part two of the Phrygian Triads. I split this intentionally because uh, I didn't want this to exceed 10 minutes for one. And number two, I think lear when you learn in baby steps, it's much better than trying to learn everything at once. And this is how you build your harmonic language. If you want to, if you want to be a film composer, if you want to be a regular composer, if you want to be a rock composer, whatever, a jazz musician, you build your harmonic language with one baby step at a time. And it's pretty straightforward, actually. So, so let's just go where we left off. We'll add the sixth chord. If you haven't watched the previous video, I'd suggest doing so. So let's just use the sixth chord in some way. I could think of just kind of in a... Almost like a tragic sound. I'm trying to present things in musical ways. It's the best way to learn these things. Is especially for people who want to be composers. You don't have to come up with the best thing. Okay, so pretty simple, pretty straightforward. We just alternate between the one and the six. But at first an inversion, then it went to the little walk down. But two and first inversion. One and uh, second inversion, and then just one again. Okay. So let's use it with more of a, just a simple arpeggiated thing. Not, not much non chord. Okay, not much non chord use. Just pretty much arpeggiation and chord tones. So, so we used a one, a six, one. Seven, six, seven, one. That's that's all we did. But I used opposite motion when I did that. Uh, between the six, seven, and one, it's just a habit of mine actually to use opposite motion and stepwise. Well, let's skip that. Um, let's let's use the three somehow. Okay, something like this. One, three, six. Okay. And we'll do it with a pulse or something. So, just trying to make it musical using this stuff. You don't have to do the best thing ever. Okay, so basically just had that pulse going and we had a, a one a three in, in the second inversion and a six. That's it. Okay. I'm taking advantage of these little half steps in Phrygian and Phrygian for tenseness, and then, and then I didn't use the uh, three anymore. I just alternated between the seven and the one. So, with that pulse still going. So let's do something more melodic. Uh, this is where Phrygian's unstable nature will come in handy. And if I kept repeating that sequence, it sounds like a constant yearning. So uh, that's the beauty of Phrygian in some of these unstable modes. We got a one, three, what I did is and a six, two, three, two, one. Okay, in parallel motion too, I believe. So don't worry about parallelism. I'm that's a, such an old school rule. Okay, so let's start using the four chord. So let's just do something melodic like before. We'll um, be four, three, now that just kind of sounds like E minor because I haven't so far touched the Phrygian chords or the the Phrygian color tone. Now we have okay. So when I finally return to that Phrygian root via and have that color tone, it suddenly changes. Doesn't quite have that E minor sound. So one four, one four. Uh, seven, six, three, two, seven, 
one. Okay. So it sounded like E minor just for a second until you hit that color tone or chords that have the color tone. So let's do something with inversions. I'll do something like this. Just kind of a constant rise. So just kind of an unsettling rise. Uh, you could use it as a buildup, especially if you got louder and louder. So I basically just walk through uh, inversions and use a couple of passing tones. One first inversion, second inversion, four first inversion, two first inversion. And then I just kept rising using that same sequence just gradually rising, okay? If you really thought it out and did it with a bunch of passing tones and suspensions and whatnot, it would sound very tense. So let's go on to the diminished chord. Um, again, they have you the chord, they have the chord they always tell you not to use, and I say that's not true. Let's, let's use it. So it's not beautiful, but it works, and it sounds it actually sounds kind of uneasy. So bear that in mind if you're a film composer or something. Tools like that. One, f five, first inversion. One, seven, first inversion. One, uh, six, one, five, first inversion. So one. So sometimes uneasy is the sound you may be looking for. So now a lot of the times we could use the uh, five diminished to go to the four chord. Um, it's not unusable. It 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 sounds very uneasy and it doesn't sound very beautiful. Um, but one, uh, five diminished in first inversion. Uh, four first inversion. Uh, five, four, three, two, and then just a unison one. Okay. So. In the next episode, we'll cover a bunch of tricks, like um, Fredjan loves the raised third five, as well as the Picardi third. Raised third five, Picardi third. Back to Fredjan. We'll cover this later, though. This allows an, an easy return to the Fredjan root, okay? And you don't always have to use, well, that's actually for the next episode. We're going to start using Phrygian tricks. And I thought about this, and instead of showing a bunch of historically used Phrygian examples, maybe we'll just go through a bunch of Phrygian tricks or what you can try since now we've covered all the chords, um, like stuff like I just showed you. So this is what to look forward to in the next episode. And what you should really take note of with Phrygian triadic music is that uh, it's it's like it prefers the stepwise kind of motion. I'm not saying using that all the time. I'm saying it. This is kind of what it prefers, though. Uh, and and bear that in mind when you're creating Phrygian sequences. It you might have better success creating stepwise uh, root movement than you would like like fourth and fifth bass, for instance. You might kind of lose that feel if you try that too much. All right. Enjoy.